So hello, everyone. Um, thanks uh, to Dr. Hay for introducing me. My name is uh, um, Razvan Andrei Stoica, and uh, I'm working with Stefano and uh, Giuseppe Abreu in Heights on uh, uh, channel estimation, post-transmission uh, post in 11p. Objective being uh, basically, of course, uh, getting a good estimate for the for the vehicular channels and also using the estimate and uh, improving uh, ranging capabilities. So let's get started. Um, in this um, presentation, I'm gonna talk uh, talk about uh, 11P. So an overview of uh, vehicular ad hoc networks in ITS from this perspective. What is 11P used for? Um, as everyone just uh, pointed out before, is mainly used for uh, dedicated short-range communication in ITS. So it enables informa information passing from uh, uh, one point to the other, either by direct communication or just simple relaying. And on top of that, of course, uh, ITS applications are, are uh, run. So messages are exchanged and uh, yeah, cooperative positioning applications are also enabled. Here is just a representation of the high level architecture where of course the communication can be made either by uh, uh, road users like vehicles, uh, bicyclists, uh, pedestrians even, and also uh, dedicated infrastructure. Okay, so out of the previous picture, we can just understand the fact that uh, wireless uh, communication, robust wireless communication is a must for, uh, ve for vehicular ad hoc networks. So therefore, the knowledge of the vehic vehicular wireless channel is, is, is fundamental, so it's a key point. However, knowing the, the wireless channel uh, doesn't necessarily uh, provide only uh, robust communication and a high uh, frame, uh, a low frame or error rate, but it also enables enables us to take this further down and uh, embed it in some sort of a fusion with uh, RSSI to improve ranging. As uh, the keynote uh, speech uh, outlined the fact that knowing uh, quintessential measures such as um, predominant uh, paths and uh, different, different values like uh, Doppler delay spread and so on are actually helping in mitigating ranging via RSSI, so mitigating multipath effects and so on. Okay, so the take home message here is just, to ra uh, is just the fact that ranging, RSSI ranging can be refined by channel state information. And starting with the basics, um, we are just looking uh, into the vehicular Wi-Fi. So for uh, the European uh, standard is just ITS G5, which has um, the fundamental part of 11P. Um, I'm just going to reiterate a couple of the key challenges that make uh, communication a problem uh, from in DSR DSRC scenarios, so no non-stationarity of channels due to mobility. So there is no um, predominant channel statistics over a packet that can change. Uh, this is also uh, viewed in the short coherence times of the channel, uh, short to medium link availability, because mo uh, vehicles are just uh, changing position reference to each other, frequent selectivity and time selectivity, of course, due to multipath and Doppler effects, and fast, shadow, uh, fast fading and shadowing due to scatterers. OK, so uh, how did we start uh, tackling the problem? So what we wanted to achieve is to, to design first a new practical uh, low, low latency and low uh, complexity channel estimation scheme, uh, which can be deployed in a real world environment. Uh, we thought of software-defined radios as prototyping a platform because it allows us to play uh, freely with, with the physical layer capabilities. So the strategy used in this sense was to implement an algorithm which we, which, which we proposed at uh, an earlier stage uh, into GNU radio, 
which is just a platform. I'm going to explain it in more detail later. And therefore, um, basically validate our simulations and contribute to the open source community. OK, so what is GNU Radio? Uh, maybe some of the people here uh, heard about it. It's basically just a framework, uh, sort of a, I would put it sort of a Linux for software-defined radios and digital signal processing. It's uh, in some ways similar to MATLAB, so it offers um, flowchart processing. Uh, a perspective, a general architecture of prototyping with it is uh, represented by this picture. So we start uh, by designing a new solution. Can be an algorithm, can be just any digital signal processing, RF related, any abstract algorithm, which you might want first to simulate somehow in a uh, scientific environment, MATLAB, scientific Python, whatnot. Uh, in the parallel, you can already start uh, designing uh, or using already existing new radio modules and then implement the simulate uh, the um, prototype solution into that module in order to create a new radio custom test module. And that basically represents the test framework which you are going to use. Then, of course, you can define your own test cases. Uh, run the test custom uh, solution. And from there, depending on the performance and on the issues you observe, you can either fix and refactor, or you can just say, OK, this would be some sort of a release candidate solution for my algorithm. OK, now a bit of uh, new radio in terms of features. Why is new radio interesting? Well, it's open source, it's free, it's widely available, it offers a great support in terms of community. As I said, uh, provides a similar functionality with uh, Simulink, offering flowchart uh, pro programming. And uh, it builds on top of C++ and Python, so it has a, a relatively um, good performance and uh, already has implemented a lot of uh, software, uh, digital, digital signal processing software. So that's really convenient because you can just focus on the blocks that interest you. Yeah, and one key aspect of it, SDR prices, so software-defined pr uh, radio prices go down and you can reuse hardware to, uh, to different projects. Okay. So how to use GNU Radio, uh, given my context. So what I did was to just start from an existing module. Uh, it was an IEEE 802.11 ABGN transceiver, uh, which I then um, integrated into my whole channel estimation uh, solution, or the other way around. I integ integrated my uh, research uh, channel estimation solution into it. Uh, starting from a flowchart perspective, this would be the code base for, for the solution that I start with. I basically had an RF uh, front end, which was uh, defined by a new SRP uh, hardware device, the N210. Then uh, this part, starting from the USRP to the right, represents everything that was implemented in software, running on, uh, partly on top of this, partly on top of uh, a host com computer. So the OFDM detection and synchronization. Uh, then the symbol equalization part, which of course includes the channel estimation uh, library, uh, followed by symbol decoding and higher level uh, Mac layer basic functionality. Uh, and at the end, just for uh, performance characterization, a debug packet sniffer. OK. The change uh, basically was made just at the level of uh, channel estimation, integrating the um, different um, bandwidth and uh, um, system uh, references necessary to run 11P, uh, and of course implementing the effective um, algorithm, which I uh, will discuss in a moment. OK, so the algorithm, the uh, self-organizing frequency algorithm. Uh, 
uh, is just an improved uh, channel estimator compliant with uh, 11p systems uh, at physical layer in terms of physical layer specifications. Yeah. Uh, it offers a superior uh, performance, um, typical to LS estimation and other uh, state-of-the-art uh, sequential schemes, and offers uh, lower complexity and latency. It is based on a feedback loop. So first, we just do a least square estimation. Then we do the demapping. Uh, the least square estimation at first of the current symbol is done on the with uh, the previous uh, channel estimate, then the symbol demapping, then the least square estimator uh, for the channel itself. Then we refine the estimate with a moving average filter running on top uh, Gaussian kernel, and then a final update where we refine the, the um, estimates based on, on, uh, on time history. We made some amendments to this algorithm. Uh, I'll go through them. First was to adapt the filtering window. Uh, we observed uh, through prototyping that it actually improves a lot uh, the results whether we use a wide uh, filtering window for low SNR and a very uh, uniform, basically a spike for high SNRs, reducing the, therefore the filtering depth. And secondly, we observed that we couldn't lock and correct the phase offset uh, among different uh, uh, symbols in the, in the packet. And this happened because of a low um, frequency resolution of the compilers in the 11P. So wha what we did was to basically correlate and um, provide a, a, me a mean um, phase offset, which we basically used to correct the um, and the channel estimate in the, in the end. And this allowed us to lock on a, fi uh, on a fixed reference. This is just a summary of the pseudocode. And now jumping to, to the tests, I performed unit tests, basically just testing the, the algorithm and system tests looking at the frame error rate and the packet itself. Uh, unit tests were performed on top of uh, uh, tab delay line uh, channels typical for uh, vehicular ad hoc networks. Uh, results showed um, that in comparison to the CDP, which is the best uh, sequential estimator in, in the literature, or was the best, we perform uh, much better in the low to medium SNR ranges, while we cap at the same level, uh, basically, at uh, high SNRs. And this was observed both for um, vehicle to vehicle uh, type of channels and vehicle to, to infrastructure uh, at uh, 100 and 300 bytes PSDUs. And for system testing, basically, we just run the communication, uh, allowing the a transmitter and the receiver to communicate, having uh, a reference transmitter known in literature. And in order to basically capture the performance here, we just uh, looked at uh, the frame error rate based <coughs> on uh, short-term statistics. So basically, we just look at the last 20% uh, or 30% of the uh, packets received and their errors. So take-home points, SDRs, future of modular radio, multi-purpose radio design. No radio, easy to use, and prototype uh, Linux for SDRs. The, uh, the CSI knowledge is not uh, only providing robust communication, but also ranging. And uh, the SOF is a compliant, performant, and low complexity channel estimation algorithm. And next steps, uh, some of them have actually been addressed. I'm, uh, I uh, provided. Uh, Quite recently, an improvement on the SOF, uh, SOF uh, performance by introducing uh, correlations on the channel in time and frequency uh, in order to make the update adaptive, uh, following some of the remarks made in the keynote speech. And uh, yeah, to come up, I hope field trials and maybe some uh, uh, outdoor uh, comparison testing versus uh, some reference decoders. Yeah. Thank you.